All right, guys, let's check out the G-Shock MTG. Now, I've had other MTGs on the channel, and I have my personal MTG here. So this one here is the MTG-B. It's MTG-B1000 or 100, 1000BD, dash one, whatever the hang tag says. You guys get it. Uh, module number 5544 suggests a retail price of $1,000. Many of these actually hold their value, and then as they're discontinued, they actually start to climb up or at least hold their value. It's pretty wild. And I get it. I see why. Um, other than the G-Shock Squares, which I'm a huge fan of the G-Shock Squares, the MTG lineup, at least the current generation of them, there are some older ones, but this current generation, this one and this one, and there's a bunch of others. There's carbon fiber bezels, and there's limited like 35th anniversary editions, different colorways. Um, whatever one you pick, I think is, in my opinion, my like my second favorite, other than the most of the squares. And the reason why, other than the fact that it's such a great size and a quality built watch, is it's the pinnacle. It's like the the highest level you can get before it gets like pretty much ridiculous. Um, to go beyond the MTG lineup, and I could be wrong here, and you guys will let me know, but from what I have looked at, beyond the MTG lineup, you basically have to go MRG. So now you're talking two to three to seven thousand dollars. Whereas brand new, these MTGs, you can pick up around a thousand dollars, and if you're super savvy and hunt the used market, you could potentially find one closer to $500. You have to be patient and you have to, you know, be uh, on the ball, but it does happen occasionally. So um, what you get with the MTG is a rock solid G-Shock. Like this is a really nice, but still, you know, the G-Shock quality of heavy duty. You have a sapphire crystal, which most watches under this don't have the sapphire crystal. So you have a really nice, Sapphire crystal, very clean, all metal construction. In this case, you have a metal strap with a resin backer, super comfortable on wrist. Mostly stainless steel construction. It's like a sandwich construction. There are some resins involved, but it's it's done at such a high level. It's really good. And then um, pretty, you know, uh, easy to use or intuitive design that you're familiar with with the whole Casio lineup. So there is a screw down crown here so you can adjust a couple of things with that. But a lot of these things you can just connect with the G-Shock app and do it right from there. Um, I definitely am a fan of the G-Shock app and connecting that way. But if you don't want to or you don't have it or whatever, you can still just run through everything right here. Um, I usually start off with the size of the watch. Let me back up. So it is a 45 millimeter case, not including all the extra bits that are hanging off it but if I measure just the case like we do with all watches and being fair it's 45 mil and then the lug to lug again this is all the way out here to where these bolts are so that is a 55 mil that's that's where you know it's longer but the overall design is still super comfortable on wrist 14.3 thick and then proprietary lug designs here guys so this width here across here is 27 and the bracelet tapers down to about 20 mil you have a full milled out clasp, four micro adjusts, double pushers, protective resin things here from dust diving marks. This one is uh, my buddy Dane that has the Celine Driver channel. I'll put a link to his channel and his video on this watch. And he picked it up used. You can see there's some wear here, but even with that wear on this uh, coating, which I thought it was a DLC coating, but maybe it's IP because it's a really nice smooth wear. Um, it's it's kind of a bummer to see that, that it's going to do that. But if you're buying it to keep it and wear it and everything like that, I'm okay with that. You know, it happens. But it's weird to see it on just that side, not that side. So um, there are three extra links in the box on this one. I thought about swapping them out so it would give me this, this, and this. And it would clean that up and you just have these two here. So um, if that bothers you. But there's a nice LED light. I'll show you that in a moment. But there's also loom on the dial, hands, all that good stuff. So if you run through the functions... On the mode button here let me zoom in so you can see this so if you run through of course you can see on the dial there the, the pattern on there with all the solar and everything and just a really fun good looking dial all together so that sub dial over there at your nine o'clock 
it's pointing towards SU, that's Sunday, right? And then of course you have your date down here, it's the 12th of January. So now we're gonna push this mode button here and you're gonna see that move. So ST is stopwatch. So that's gonna to go to a stopwatch and you're gonna see that zero out. That's gonna help you keep track of your minutes and everything. So next up is gonna be your countdown timer. Now you can set down what kind of countdown time you have. I don't know if they come preset as five or 10, I can't remember. Um, but you can set that up in the Bluetooth app. You, I, I think you can do it on the watch, but it's easier on the app. Next up, as you can see there is the AL. That's gonna be for your alarm. And you can see the seconds hand pointed towards off. So currently it's off. And I have my other one set up with the, the beeps when you push. This one has it silenced, so you can do that as well. And then next up, when you hit it again, it's gonna swoop back around and it's gonna show you your fuel gauge there, your battery level. This has sat in a drawer for a while. Dane has not been wearing it with it and he did not connect with it, so it's a little low. Um, a day of sitting on the windowsill or just wearing out in the sun, um, or even artificial light, this thing's gonna to top off charge, no problem. So there's the functions on all that, and then you know these two buttons here get used when you operate those. Now, to operate the time setting modes, you unscrew this crown here. Okay, I can feel it pop a little bit. And then that first pop there, you're gonna see the seconds hand is gonna to point towards LAX. That's that bottom subdial there at the six o'clock. I currently have it set three hours behind the, my time zone that I'm in now, which is the main time, the hour and minute hand. So that way I can keep track of my West Coast buddies. I can see where they're at. But you can jump it forward or backwards, wherever time zone you want to track, whatever you're doing. Or you could set that for your home time. And if you're traveling, then you could pop this out one more position. And I currently have it in my uh, Eastern standing, Easter, Eastern Standard Time. But say I was going to go travel and visit my buddies on the West Coast, I could just go back as I'm traveling to LAX or West Coast Time. And then I could have that as my main time and I could have that as my... Um, home time, which makes more sense, really. But I'm not traveling, unfortunately, even though it's cold here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in my home time. And then you just go ahead and push that down, screw that in. And the knurling on the crown is really good. It's very easy to grip, even though the oversized crown guards here protect it. So it's still easy to operate. And then on the case back here, you can see it's uh, really nice milled out. And it has some information, all that good stuff. So if you're interested in that, there's that. So now let's, uh, well, here I'll give you a side-by-side -side of the, with the red one here. And typically these are multi-band, so typically you're gonna get that radio signal, but both these have been sitting in a place where they can't get it, and neither of them are connected to a Bluetooth right now. Otherwise they'd be dead on at the same time. They would both be at the same time. That other little subdial, just uh, right of the six o'clock subdial, that is pointing towards AM or PM. So you can see we're just past noon and that's for the lower subdial there. This top one up here is indicating another uh, 24 hour clock. That is gonna be your time zone, if that makes sense, in the 24 hour clock. Okay, so let's take a look at the loom that is on the dial because the indices have loom and the hour and minute hands uh, have loom on there. And uh, pretty good loom, really. It's gonna show a little bit brighter on camera than it does in real life, but it's still really good. And then of course the light function, a really bright LED down here in between the seven and the eight o'clock illuminates the whole surface area there. So, all right guys, if you have any questions on this, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next vid.